So here we are with another installment of how to get better at Black Ops 6 incredibly fast. In today's video, I have some awesome tips so you can get better with literally minimal effort. Today's tips are going to focus on small things that you can change right now that are going to help your game massively. So without further ado, let's get right into them. I wanted to start off talking about perks and help you fully grasp how the perk system works this year. In the past, we've had four perks, two of which came from the third category. This year is slightly different. We're down to the pick three system, where if you choose choose the right perks, they actually give you bonuses. For example, if you're a more active rushing player, you could choose three red perks and receive a bonus that allows you to move faster and regenerate health for a short time after each elimination. A mixture of three green perks allows you to have the strategist boost, and three blue give you the recon speciality, which is by far the most broken thing in the game right now, as it basically gives you high alert and wall hacks every time you respawn. There's also the return of wild cards, allowing you to shake up your class and change things you normally can't in your loadout. If you choose the overkill wildcard, it's incredibly important which weapon you use as your primary. The weapon in your first slot is what you'll spawn with, so if you find you're not using that weapon often, consider changing it out. Personally, I believe in putting the close range SMG weapon in your primary slot with the assault rifle or sniper as the secondary. This allows you to take on enemies trying to spawn trap you, letting you break free without constantly swapping weapons. Perks now more than ever can really make or break your class setup and help you achieve things in different ways. If you're looking to get fast, XP, I'd recommend using Ninja as your first perk, Dispatcher as your second, and Bankroll as your third, allowing you to get your score streaks quicker thus getting you more XP. Now, before I dive into the next segment, I highly recommend putting together a team if possible. I know many of you, like me, tend to play solo, but multiplayer games are about teamwork. Diving into a match by yourself puts you at a massive disadvantage most of the time. With teammates, you can communicate and work together, and you're far more likely to win matches, get higher kills, and enjoy the experience more. With that said, here are some great solo strategy tips. As you dive into a match, you'll notice a few things. Spawn locations are terrible, players seem sweatier than ever, and you might feel like you suck. It's okay, I felt the same way until I changed my mindset. Just slow down and think. It's easy to get caught up in the action, running at the enemy over and over again, but that's the fastest way to lose matches. Instead, take a moment to think about what you're doing and be more present in your gameplay. You want to let the enemy push you. If the enemies seem to outgun you every time you push for eliminations, let them make the mistakes. Find a spot where they funnel through and hold it down while they push. On the flip side of that, don't be the one running into the funnel. Call of Duty maps are usually designed with a three lane system guiding players into funnels for gunfights. Look for alternate routes to eliminate enemies more effectively. You want to play on the edges of the map as much as possible. Players tend to go straight down into the middle lane, but if you find routes around the edge of the map that let you get behind your enemies, you'll be in a much better position overall. Because positioning is key. When engaging enemies, find a spot where most of your body is covered, forcing the enemy to expose theirs. If you're trying to go on a high kill streak, you need to ensure they can't hit their shots on you. If you are playing with random squads, steer clear of them. They often run around recklessly and give away your position, leading to unnecessary deaths. You also want to keep a close eye on your minimap at all times. Understanding spawn mechanics can be tricky at first, but you can gauge enemy spawn locations based on where your teammates are. Enemies will typically spawn in the opposite location of the majority of where your team is. Now for when you get in gunfights, you need trigger discipline. One of the most important skills is knowing when to shoot. Sometimes it's worth letting one player slip by to get the whole team a few seconds later. You also don't want to over challenge. If you take out one enemy, don't get greedy, reset, reload, and then re-challenge. This puts you back in an advantageous position. You should also Always assume there's going to be more than one enemy. Prepare by not immediately reloading and switch to another weapon and be ready to engage again. You need to play for picks. Run into a specific area, take out one enemy and get out. This allows you to get more eliminations without dying unnecessarily. Due to aim assist being nerfed, stay at least 5 meters away from enemies, preferably around 10. If you find yourself too close and eliminate someone, be prepared for another enemy to come after you straight away. Choosing the right field upgrade is so important for your playstyle. Use assault packs if you need more lethals and tacticals, or trophy systems if you play the objective more. With the addition of Omni movement this year, jumping can actually get you killed faster. Stay near the ground and break your enemy's line of sight with a slide and take them down more effectively. And finally, here's some quick fire tips to help you rank up faster. As I said before, playing with a team helps you massively. Working together 
have at least more wins and kills. You need to be playing the objective, capturing flags or getting kills on hard points gives you the bonus XP you need. Try to rack up score streaks for bonus points on the go and complete daily challenges as they offer you free XP and are very easy to accomplish. If you found any of this useful, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. And for those of you who watch my videos, know I like to see who sticks around until the end. So if you're still here, let me know down in the comments by answering this. Would you rather have fingers for toes or toes for fingers? That's it from me. And as always, I hope you will have a wonderful day.